Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is wretch. Wretch. You know the line from the Amazing Grace that saved a wretch like me. I love the shirts that say, you know, said, uh, I'm the wretch the song refers to. And the point is that we've all, right, if we are born again believers, then uh, we were that rich and we were the one that were in need of saving. And and here today as we're in Ezra chapter nine, picking up right where we left off yesterday. If you remember, he hears the devastating news of the sin that was going on. And then here's what he uh, continues on in verses four and five of Ezra nine it says, then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I arose from my fasting and having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord, my God. Now, you can read on and, and just for our short time today, I encourage you to read this on your own. But to look through this beautiful prayer for the rest of the chapter that Ezra cries out and, and you know, he has the and some of the people there with him, and we'll talk tomorrow about what happens even while he's praying, but uh, it, it's amazing to see as he goes through this, it's a prayer like we would think. You look back through their story, and, and Ezra is just simply saying, God, you're, you're awesome. God, you're wonderful. Look at the blessings that you've given us, and, and even our sin in the, in our fa- that our fathers did a long time ago, and, and caused us to go into captivity, and all this destruction to happen, but but then God, by your grace and your mercy, there was a, you allowed a remnant to, to, to remain and to come back and uh, that we've been able to rebuild and, and all this process that's still going on. God, we thank you and we praise you. And, but even in that, Lord, even as we say that, that, that you allowed us to do that. Now we've spit in your face again. And, and now we're continuing to go against your word. And, and he even goes and says, look, I, I remember your word. Your word specifically said we were not to be intermarried. We weren't even supposed to um, do anything to make peace with these other nations there in the promised land. And 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 Lord, we remember all that. And, and I guess now really, Lord, you could just wipe us all out. You could just take us all out because the way you've punished us for our sin thus far, it doesn't even compare to what we deserve. That in a nutshell is what he prays. That is a right attitude towards God. And until we get to the point where we realize that we're not all that great, right? And I'm not trying to break you down this morning, but it's something that we all need to remember that we we don't have it all together and we are not perfect. And as I said Sunday, I love Philippians 1, 6, but look, he has begun a good work in me and he's going to complete it. But also as we were in Galatians chapter three, remember that it started with the spirit. So I'm not going to continue on in the flesh and think I'm going to perfect it. No, we need to uh, stay the course. We need to stay letting the spirit of God move in our hearts and our lives to, to guide us in all things that we need to do. See, and that's in his prayer, what he's trying to really say is God, we need to be forgiven. And that's what we're asking for. But then he's, he's also going to go further because we know we can't just leave it there. It's one thing if he had just sat down and was weeping over their, their sin and stopped. But then he weeps over their sin and then he begins to pray. That's a good next step. Then in his prayer, he's repenting and asking for forgiveness. Those two things can go hand in hand as well. But then when you're going to find out too is that it also calls for obedience or calls for action. So, so maybe today, or maybe even as we're reading through this this week, maybe you need to stop and say, well, what, what stage am I at right now? Maybe God has convinced you or convicted you of something in your life that's not quite right. Something that he's trying to fine tune and adjust and something that as Jeremiah says there in the potter's hand, that he's trying to mold you as the clay and in, into exactly what he would have you to be. Maybe, just maybe, right? We need to realize that we're in that we're in that cycle right now. Maybe we think, well, I've got it all together, but maybe God's trying to get your attention because you don't. Maybe you think you're living holy, but you're not, and you need to be shown that. Or maybe you maybe you even need a little uplifting. Maybe you think that I've done too much and I'm I'm that wretch, but I'm that wretch that can't be saved. You can never go too far away from God. You're never beyond his reach. 
if nothing else, just to look through all these Old Testament stories uh, that show us that they are there for us to learn from that that we see over and over that, yes, God deals with sin and he's always going to deal with it. And a lot of times he's very much he's much more patient than we would be. And much more patient than just quite frankly, than he ought to be. But he is because he's a loving God. And that's something we need to praise him for today. So you may be feeling like you're that wretch and that may be the appropriate attitude today. But know that that there's a savior in heaven who loves you in spite of it. In spite of your sin, he still loves you. A God in heaven who loves you so much he sent his son to die for you. Oh, you can be that wretch that was also saved. By that beautiful, amazing grace. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.